Hello everyone and welcome to another foundation review from me. I'm so happy to get back into the swing of it. Y'all didn't know this, but I've been gone for a little while. <laughs> I pre-recorded and stuff, so there have been things going on. Don't even worry about it. All is well. It just led to me. I didn't think I would be out for as long as I was, and so that led to me not having filmed quite enough in order, I had one extra weekly wear, but I didn't have another one. So last week, you didn't get a weekly wear. I apologize, that was an oversight on my part. But we are back now here with a weekly wear on this new guy. This is a new foundation from Pretty Vulgar. This is the Cool AF <laughs> Lava Water foundation. What the heck is lava water? I don't know, but we're gonna find out together. This thing is freaking huge. Could you see that like this is as big as my face? It's because you get more than an ounce of product. You get 1.18 fluid ounces of product here. It is $39, so it's getting up there in price, I would say anyways, and there are 15 different shades available to choose from. The shade range is kind of, eh, to me, it's mainly focused, if you ask me, on the middle shades. There are a couple light slash fair shades, Shades. There's a couple deep shades, but the majority of the shades seem to be in the middle, so make whatever you will of that. I got the shade number 15 or 15, however that, why would I, 15 Cassie, that's a number, this is in the buff. But we'll see. The specs on this guy is that it is a full coverage matte liquid foundation, good for normal, oily, and combo skin. It's also going to be cooling, lightweight, and long lasting for naturally flawless looking skin. Why I motioned to my, I mean natural, I guess is what I was motioning to on my face. Flawless. <laughs> the highlighted ingredients in this product are lava water, like I said, what the heck, but then also charcoal powder and sodium, I never know how to pronounce this, hyaluronate? Hyaluronate? Thanks for that one, pretty vulgar. <laughs> but the lava water, the lava water is apparently a natural resource from the base of volcanic ruins. It helps to improve the overall condition of the skin and provides environmental defense. Is that because it's from the environment? I mean, it is filled with minerals and nutrient salts, provides antioxidant and supports natural cell production. The charcoal powder helps to protect the skin, also to draw out, I'm assuming, impurities and stuff, at least that's what it seems to do in things like a charcoal mask, also absorb oils. Then we've got a boost in skin moisture content, promotion of visible firmness, and also reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. This is also free of a bunch of bad ingredients and is also vegan and cruelty free. And also, bonus, this comes in recyclable packaging, not just the cardboard box, but I'm assuming they mean the actual bottle, because all cardboard boxes should be recyclable. And to use, just make sure you shake it well. You can use one to two pumps and basically blend the foundation out just like you would any other foundation. They promote their foundation brush. We are going to try it together with a brush that looks kind of similar to that and then also with a sponge. So I think that is about all I can tell you for now. Let's hop on over to my natural daylight so that we can start applying this and then we can start applying this. Boop, boop. All right, so here is my face at the moment. Take my glasses off. Uh, my skin has been washed and moisturized. However, no primer today, not for the first day. We are going to test out this foundation au naturel. Like I said, this seems like a large bottle. Kinda, yeah, this reminds me more of a perfume bottle than a foundation bottle, but I do think that's kind of, you know, kind of on brand for pretty vulgar. A lot of people, I feel like their packaging sways people one way or the other, like either people really, really love it or else they think it's super, super tacky. I fall somewhere in between. Some of their stuff I think is pretty tacky looking, but some of it I personally really like. Hmm, something to note, this only has a six month shelf life. I feel like most foundations, isn't it 12 months? But let's see, we've got a nice pump here. But as you all know, the best pumps are those that work. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, good job. You passed the first test, pretty vulgar. Sure, let's do one half of the face with a brush. The brush that they seemed to promote looked like a flat top kabuki type of a thing, so that is what I grabbed. Now let's see how this applies. It's definitely got a foundation smell to it. Also, maybe kind of a SPF -y. I think there's SPF in this though. So maybe I'm just uh maybe I'm just kidding myself. And it looks like the coverage, I mean so far anyways, I would not call this a full coverage foundation, but you know, if it is buildable, that's great. I would say it's like a light 
medium at best in terms of coverage. I mean, you can still see discoloration and stuff peeking through for sure. But overall, I don't think it looks horrendous. I've got a feeling I'm gonna like it better with a sponge because most foundations I like better with a sponge and just based on how that applied just now, I just get the, I've got a feeling, darn it. So honestly, I think sides look pretty comparable in terms of finish and coverage and everything. I do like the way that it applied with a sponge better, but like I also said, this is definitely not full coverage to me. Not that I'm necessarily looking for full coverage, but I do want to see how buildable, if buildable at all, this foundation is. So let's go ahead and test that out. And there we have it. I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty natural on the skin, I think. It definitely has a dewy kind of a finish. I don't personally think this is matte. And it also kind of has that feeling where it's just on the brink of feeling like it meshes with my skin, but it's not quite there. So it does feel like it's sitting on top of my skin a little bit, which has me as an oily skinned person very nervous that this is just going to slippity slide right off. But you know, time will tell. We are just gonna have to wait and see. So yeah, I am gonna go put on the rest of my makeup, get on with my day. I will be checking in with you all periodically so that we can see how this is doing and everything. And in any case, I'll just, I'll be seeing y'all very soon here on YouTube land. Ready? Ding! All right, my friends, it is the end of the night. I felt no need to check in with you all, which is surprising in that I was very sweaty at one point in the day and I'm starting to feel oily now. But like, we're nine and a half hours in, I'm not gonna blot. I'm gonna go wash my face and go to bed, <laughs> you know? But my skin looks good as far as I'm concerned. Does it look perfect? No. I've got a feeling that this oxidizes and I'm gonna hope that that's what that is anyways and that I just didn't completely miss that part of my f forehead, my hairline when I was blending out, um, you know, but if I did, <sighs> it is what it is, can't go back. But uh, yeah, as I think you can see, hopefully you can see other than the oxidization that I think occurred. I think my face looks good and this was with no primer. I'm starting to have a slight sheen to my face, but it doesn't look like it's separated too badly. It only transferred around my nose when I blew my nose just now before filming. Earlier when I was to touch my face or anything though, I did not notice hardly if any foundation come off onto my fingers. But even now when I do swipe at my face, you know, my forehead, my nose, it's coming off a ton on my fingers now that I'm oily, but it doesn't look like it's leaving huge smear marks or anything on my face. This has felt lightweight throughout the day. It's maybe feeling slightly, uh, not sticky or tacky or anything, but it's also not a heavy feeling. It just, it's getting a bit more foundation-y feeling with my oils here, but aside from that, this has been comfy cozy all day. I am pumped to keep on trying out this lava water magic on my face. And I'm excited to keep on bringing you all along with me. So I'm gonna go to bed and then I'll be back in just a second here. YouTube magic, hey, ready, ding. All right, everyone, good evening. It is the end of the night of day three here. I have feelings. Let's talk about them. You all saw how things went on day one, but I still had hopes that days two and three would go much better. So on day two, I went ahead and I used my Smashbox primer just to, you know, see how this does with my second favorite primer, a nice hydrating one. And I also went ahead and used my Kaja concealers just for a nice light conceal, you know, just see how this ends up working with another product. I didn't want to use a too heavy of a concealer so you couldn't see you know how buildable this is once again etc etc so I went ahead did the primer did the concealers and then I went ahead and did just a sponge application for that day it didn't apply as smoothly I didn't feel like I wasn't sure if that was because of the primer or if it was because it just dried really quickly and I was working with my whole face rather than in sections I think it's because of the latter of those two possible problems but 
but I'm not exactly sure. That being said, it still looked fine, it was buildable, I made it look okay, I thought. However, I was able to see that this definitely, definitely oxidizes, so that was a huge bummer to see that it gets darker and gets quite orange. However, I went ahead and I checked in around the four hour mark. I wasn't feeling oily, but I did look a little shiny, so I figured, you know, I would show you guys what was going on. I also just went ahead and blotted to get rid of that shininess. It didn't really transfer onto blotting sheets, just the littlest bit, but it really Really was not transferring onto my fingers or anything and then I started noticing a major transfer onto my fingers around the seven hour mark but I wasn't feeling super oily so I didn't really do anything about it I just kind of grit my teeth and hope for the best type of a thing and so at 11 hours when I checked in for the final time that day uh, like I said I was getting the transfer onto my fingers quite badly I also had some separation on my nose and also around my mouth lines. Again, not sure if that was because of the concealer, if it just didn't work well with the concealer or what, but it did seem to be my oiliness that made this foundation transfer quite a bit. That being said, I still thought it looked pretty darn good at the end of day two. Not perfect for sure, but you know, not the worst I've ever seen. So I went into day three here with very high hopes. First off, I used my favoriteest primer ever, my Guerlain primer. Give a nice good tacky base. I thought since it might not have worked so well with the Smashbox, it made me think it was gonna work much better with this Guerlain one. And I also went ahead and used the Kaja under eye concealer, but then I also used one of my other favorite concealers, the Too Faced Concealer, just to see if it just doesn't play well with other concealers. You know who knows? Well, I think it worked pretty darn well. I went ahead and used a stippling foundation brush and stippled the foundation onto my skin to get it, you know, to start working and blending in as quickly as possible. And then I just went ahead and I blended that out with a sponge and that method seemed to work very, very well. It was still able to build and everything and I thought the finish looked really nice. Oh, I did also mix it with a white foundation mixer because of the oxidation and I do think that that helped a lot slash took away that problem entirely. And then that brings us to the end of the night, my friends. I didn't feel a need to check in with you all at all today, even though I was sweaty multiple times. It's hot out. I was at the DMV today. My goodness. It was hot at the DMV, there were a lot of people there, even though it's the middle of the week and it was the middle of the afternoon, you know, and I have been a little bit oily throughout the day, but nothing I felt like I needed to touch up at all until the end of the night here. And even then, you know, yes, it transferred onto the blotting sheets, the foundation did, but not horribly. And, you know, there's only the littlest bit of fading around my nose. Like, I'm pretty sure it was from when I had to blow my nose earlier today. You know, I saw it transfer onto the tissue a bit. And, you guys, I just, I'm, I'm so happy with this foundation. It's got its flaws, for sure. But overall, this might be a contender for my favorite foundation for the summer or you know just for hot weather and that sort of a thing in general. Like I said though it does come with its cons so let's go ahead and do a little roundup here pros and cons. Start off with the pros. First off it's buildable. I like that about it. I don't know that I would call this like a full coverage foundation, so if that's what you're looking for, I don't know that I would suggest this one. So I have something in my eye, I wasn't winking at you, but if you want it to be a wink, uh, wink wink. <laughs> Second pro is that I feel like this is a very lightweight foundation. It really rarely feels like I'm wearing foundation, even when I do get oily. You know, that's when I tend to feel like, oh, I'm really wearing a foundation, and it starts to feel heavy. This one really didn't have that effect. Like, I could definitely tell when I was getting oily but it didn't feel uncomfortable or anything like that. And that being said, with oils, I'm not exactly sure, but I think this might control oils a little bit. Not a hundred percent, obviously you guys saw I did get oily throughout the day, but it just seemed like I didn't get quite as oily. I don't, maybe that's in my brain. You all can be your own judge of that. And then overall my fourth pro for this is that I feel like it wears really gracefully or fades really gracefully. It just overall, 
I think it looked really good at the end of the night considering everything I have put it through. Then for cons, the first one is just that it does dry quite quickly. I don't know, some people would say this isn't a con, but to me it's just something, you know, I'm gonna have to be cognizant about when I do use this foundation is that you can't work like your whole face, you have to do it in little sections, which is fine. You just it's something to note and also of note is that this does oxidize so definitely I would suggest if you are planning on buying this foundation to maybe try getting it one to two shades lighter than you typically would I had to mix in quite a bit of white mix in medium to get mine to look the right shade on me but you know once I did it works out fine I just you know if you don't have a white mix in medium or you don't want to bother with that maybe just you know try not using the shade that you think you would be go a little lighter and the last con that I could think of is just that this does transfer with oils but like I said it transfers really gracefully this is the kind of foundation where even though I do see it come off onto my fingers not now because I already blotted but when I am oily and I do see it come off onto my fingers there aren't big smear marks or anything on my face so I'm super pleased with this foundation. I did not think I was going to be, honestly, because the last time I tried a pretty vulgar foundation, I did not like it, like, at all. <laughs> but like I said, this is, uh, this is, I really like this foundation, you guys. I would highly suggest it to my fellow oily skinned beauties out there. I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone with dry skin, but definitely combo and oily, maybe normal, you know, and give it a try if you feel like it basically is what I'm saying. I personally really liked it. I'm excited to use this in the summer and there are not many foundations that I can say I'm excited to have on my face during the hot hot summer time. So overall there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this foundation review, found it helpful in seeing whether or not this is going to be a foundation that you are going to want to try out for yourself. Let me know in the comments down below if you have tried this foundation, what are your thoughts on it, do you want to try it, etc, etc. I love hearing from you guys cooking up a nice casserole of comments down below. You can also let me know if you found this video helpful and or enjoyable by giving it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap that notification bell down below. Become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. Until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!